And uh, the conversation with the chief rabbi uh, was remarkable. Uh, I told him what I was doing, that I was reading the Gospels, trying to find out whether Jesus had anything to say about the earth. And uh, there were three points in the conversation which uh, stand out for me because I found the encounter with him another radically learning experience. First thing I said was, well, I suppose you go to Genesis, do you? Oh, no, he said. That's a very Christian way of reading the Bible. And he said, no, no, we go to Deuteronomy, to that verse in Deuteronomy where it says to the children of Israel that as they take the promised land, they are never, ever to destroy a fruit-bearing tree. So long before the science of deforestation was known, there in the Old Testament scriptures was this instruction to protect the fruit-bearing tree. He then said to me, do you know what the three most extraordinary words in the Gospels are? This is the chief rabbi to a bishop of England. No, no, give up, please tell me. He said, the three most extraordinary words of Jesus are, but I say. You've heard that it was said, you know that it was written, but I say. There's no evidence of a rabbi uh, before that time ever teaching in that way. And then thirdly, he drew to my attention something which I knew, but which I didn't know. There are a lot of things that we know intellectually, but somehow haven't really permeated our being. And it was this. He said, the title that Jesus takes to himself, Son of Man, in Hebrew is Ben Adam. And you know he said that Adam, Adam, comes from the Hebrew for the earth, Adama. <laughs> so Jesus, in calling himself the Son of Man, calls himself the Son or the Child of the One, hewn from the earth. <clears throat> Did Jesus have anything to say about the earth? Answer, it's the very title that he takes to himself. Now, when people address him as Lord and God, he blesses them. When, he use, when they use the word Messiah, he's a bit ambivalent because of the connotations. But left to his own devices to describe his own mission and ministry, Jesus refers to himself exclusively as the Son of Man. Now, theologians here will know that libraries are full of books about the meaning mm -hmm. of this title. Does it come from the book of Daniel or the book of Ezekiel? Does it have resonances with the Psalms or with Genesis? Or is it just a fancy way of saying I or me? But something happened in my encounter with the chief rabbi that led me back to my study so that every time I came across the word Son of Man, the phrase Son of Man, I wrote it down in my notebook, and uh, then one morning, and I am hesitant to describe it in these terms because I've listened to many people over the years describe spiritual experiences to me, and I've sat there metaphorically scratching my head thinking, well, I'm not quite sure about that myself, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt because it seemed a little wacky to me. So you might think that this is a little wacky, what I'm about to say to you. But while I was reading the New Testament and searching for the phrase, the Son of Man, the title, the Son of Man, this question <coughs> entered my head from nowhere. Most of my thinking is done in a linear way. I can, I can see the progression of my talk now in my head, and it's in a linear form. But this was like walking down a street and somebody crashing into you from the side on a bike. Just came from nowhere. And this was the question that arose, and it was this. It was almost prefaced by the word James. It felt so personal and transforming. And it was, are there any times in the Gospels, when Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, Son of the One hewn from the earth, and in the same breath talks about the earth. Well, not for a long time have I searched the scriptures so avidly. I grabbed my concordance, 
went through with the tooth comb and discovered that there are at least seven occasions in the <coughs> Gospels where Jesus calls himself the Son of Man and in the same breath talks about the earth. And this little book, by the way, and there are some younger people here, which is lovely to see, and if you're a student, I simply say in the preface that I hope one day that this book falls into the hands of an aspiring PhD student. Because, and I've talked to the most eminent New Testament scholars, and to date, nobody but nobody in the 2,000 years of Christian theology has ever made a study of this collection of Son of Man Earth sayings in the Gospel. That's a terribly arrogant thing for me to say, you may think, because, you know, who am I? I'm just a jobbing bishop. I'm not a theologian, but I do love reading the Bible. And I have read it now for decades. And nobody has made a study of this collection of Son of Man Earth sayings. And, and any academics here will know, any academic theologians will know, that PhD theses have been constructed on much more flimsy ground than that.